I will just introduce the topic with a couple of slides and then I will move to the actual uh, demo. So uh, the idea today is to see how you can use uh, SharePoint framework to uh, extend the user interface of Power Automate when it is needed. And that's why I want to share with you a couple of information. So first of all, with Power Automate, uh, when you create a flow uh, integrated with uh, uh, SharePoint Online, uh, you can do quite a lot of stuff nowadays. And for example, you can configure a launch uh, uh, panel or a flow launch panel that you can use to collect information from users when they start uh, a new instance of a flow uh, by selecting, explicitly selecting an item and then starting uh, a flow instance. With the um, a flow launch panel, you can collect input arguments, which can be uh, text information or a drop down a list of options. Uh, yes, no fields, uh, and a file attached to the flow, an email uh, address, uh, or a number or a date, which is really cool and great because you can improve the quality of your flows uh, when you start them from within uh, SharePoint Online. However, what if we need to do something more? Like, for example, we need to collect uh, specific users or groups uh, using the people picker, uh, eventually with some filtering criteria, or what if you want to collect, uh, for example, terms uh, using the uh, taxonomy of uh, SharePoint Online. Uh, nowadays, the taxonomy is back uh, to life, let me say, and uh, it is becoming, uh, again, uh, uh, very important in the uh, uh, token management solutions and information architecture of solutions based on SharePoint Online. So. Why not using the taxonomy to collect uh, uh, information, which will be additional input for our flows? Uh, why not having the capability to support multi-language UI or a UI that can be adapted to the uh, context when we are rendering uh, the flow panel to request information to the user? And why not having uh, constraints or validation rules about the input field that we collect? All of these capabilities unfortunately uh, are not available if you just use the flow launch panel and that's why i want to show you how you can leverage a sharepoint framework to do that moreover you can add custom logic of course and many many other things uh, uh, whenever you use sharepoint framework to build the ui uh, and moreover when you think about the flow association uh, targeting sharepoint online well, in um, Flow, in Power Automate, you can associate a flow uh, to a list or a library, but uh, uh, for example, you cannot associate uh, a flow to a specific content type unless you use some tricks uh, in the flow that you create. At the same time, uh, we cannot use the same flow on multiple libraries, again, unless we use, uh, uh, for example, tricks like uh, registering a flow to listen for a webhook for multiple list libraries, and then inside the flow, we uh, try to understand uh, what the target list or library is. So there are some challenges nowadays uh, when you want to do more than what is provided out of the box. And again, so if we want to, for example, associate or start uh, and make it possible for end user to start the flow if and only if they select uh, an item with a specific content type uh, we need to do uh, something more in flow in power automate we can use the trigger conditions but uh, there there is a but let me say i mean uh, for example you start the, the flow in power automate and the flow will have a trigger condition which will make uh, the flow actually trigger or not but the user will still have to click and we still have the capability to click in the ui and to start the flow even if the trigger condition is not satisfied and the same applies uh, whenever uh, you want uh, to start the flow uh, targeting items with a specific status, with a specific value in their field. So in all of these scenarios, again, being able to uh, extend or replace the uh, uh, flow panel of flow with uh, uh, something built with SharePoint framework, I think uh, is uh, uh, really useful, as well as uh, to being able to uh, associate or use the same flow uh, targeting multiple uh, lists or libraries. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can do that uh, using SPFX integrated with uh, um, Power Automate. So first of all, uh, uh, let me uh, show you a solution that I have 
and uh, here we have a document library in a modern team site and here I have a flow, uh, a flow defined with Power Automate. So I can select an item, I can go to Automate and I can start uh, a new flow with the launch panel. And this is the launch panel I was talking about. So in a matter of two seconds, we will be able to provide some input arguments like uh, some um, text, for example. We can select some input values, we can choose a Boolean, we can upload a file if we like. It can be whatever you like. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Let me get a sample document. OK, this one. Let me provide uh, an email address, uh, which can be my address. So now you can spam me if you like. Uh, can be a number and can be a date. So still some good options available out of the box with flow. You can run your flow and in your flow you will get uh, the uh, information in fact, if you go to the uh, to this uh, flow in Power Automate, which I defined, we can see that we uh, just uh, uh, or we will have a flow running. Or maybe I didn't. Oh, okay, I didn't get a proper email address. Sorry about that. So let's get this one, for example. Run flow. Okay, and here we will see in a matter of few seconds the flow which was executed. So all good, and we got a bunch of input arguments inside the flow. Now, what if we want? Uh, to do uh, more because when we do that, uh, we use the, uh, uh, for example, the uh, trigger action for a selected file in SharePoint, uh, collect some input arguments and we can add as many input arguments as we like. But what if we want to do more? Like, for example, being able to say, OK, let me select this item. And if and only if this item has a specific content type or as a specific status in a field, I want to have, using SPFX extensions, a common set which will allow me to start the flow with a custom dialog which will have a more customizable user experience, like for example, this one, which reminds me the uh, approval flows we were used to use uh, in the past uh, with the approval flows of uh, SharePoint 2010, uh, far memory. But still, uh, customers often want to have uh, such kind of experience. They want to be able to define a list of approvers dynamically. So, for example, I can have myself as an approver, but I can also define that I want to have another approver, which can be one of my colleagues here or I can do more, I can choose a date, I can use a, a taxonomy field and so on and so forth. By building such kind of solution, you can uh, easily extend and provide a better UI uh, based on SPFX, but still integrated with uh, Power Automate. In fact, by clicking on the Start Flow button here, I can see that in another flow that I have in my Power Automate here, let me go here, my flows, and here I have my SPFX flow UI, we can see that we have a flow which is running right now. This is just creating an approval task and sending an approval task to the two users that I selected. And we can see that in this flow, if I click on this one, it is working, it is running. And most likely now it is completely executed. OK, and I will be able to see in my inbox that I have uh, or I will have soon a message uh, coming from uh, the uh, flow in Power Automate with the assignment of an approval task uh, to my user. So how can we build uh, such kind uh, of solution? First of all, in SharePoint framework, uh, we can define uh, an extension, a common set extension. And in the common set extension, in the on list view updated, we can easily check uh, if the content type of the selected item is the one we are looking for. So by accessing the event uh, uh, object that we get as the input to this method, we can simply collect the content type ID information uh, and field of the selected row, which is just one item in this scenario. And we can compare this one with the setting that, for example, we could have in the settings of our common set. In fact, in the properties of the common set, we defined a target content type ID property which can be configured whenever we associate these common sets to a specific target list or library, which is what I'm doing here. So when I add this uh, common set, which is uh, at the very end a custom action from a SharePoint Online point of view, I can provide in the settings also uh, through a JSON uh, object, uh, the target content type ID that I want to target with my uh, common set. Then 
once I have uh, decided if I want to enable or not the uh, command in the uh, UI, I can on the execute method simply rely on a dialog built using the SharePoint framework dialog framework. And here I have a dialog window which I created. And of course, this sample will be then shared uh, on GitHub. And here I have a dialog which has been built using the dialog framework of SPFX. And I simply create a new instance of a dialog content object, which I define here as a React component. And inside this React component, I will simply render a, uh, an array of approvers, for example, where every single approver is yet another uh, React component, which will simply use the people control that we have in PMP in order to collect uh, what the user is, what is the user selected by uh, the end user uh, triggering uh, the new flow. And of course, we can dynamically render the approver controls inside the UI uh, rather than having a predefined set of fields like we do have uh, using the out of the box uh, flow uh, launch panel of uh, Power Automate. So uh, once we have done that, uh, inside the uh, command set, when we uh, complete the collection of information through the dialog window, we can simply create a flow uh, start flow request, which will be a JSON object. In there, we can store information about the site, about the document, about the approvers uh, provided by the user through the UI, as well as, of course, uh, if you like a, a flow due date or whatever else, a taxonomy field or whatever you like. And then we can make an HTTP request targeting the URL of our flow, which will be a flow triggered by an HTTP action. So that if I show you in Power Automate, the source of my flow, let me go here. This is an HTTP triggered flow. In the request body, I define through the uh, JSON schema syntax that I want to get the site URL the collection of approvers as an array of strings, the due date, and the file relative URL. And inside the flow, I can simply use the out of the box capabilities of Power Automate to get the uh, file object, to get the metadata of the file, and whatever else I need to do. And I can go through all of the approvers to uh, assign them an approval task, which can be a sequential or a parallel approval task, uh, depending on what I want to do in my uh, business logic. So, quite easy, quite simple uh, to do. Of course, in order to use this trigger, we need uh, uh, the premium uh, capabilities of Power Automate. To be fair, there is a kind of a workaround. We can eventually store some information inside metadata fields of the currently selected item and avoid using the HTTP trigger. But as such, we will not be able to associate uh, the flow to multiple uh, lists and libraries. So up to you, uh, depending on the fact that you want to use the uh, premium capabilities or not uh, of uh, uh, Power Automate. But as such, uh, this is, uh, I think, a great way of extending the UI of uh, uh, Power Automate in uh, SharePoint Online using SharePoint Framework. And last but not least, uh, you can also do stuff like uh, in Microsoft Teams, uh, of course, having a tab uh, which will render the web content of your list or library, and you will still be able to choose an item and start the flow from there, and you will still have the same reach inside Microsoft Teams. I think that was uh, it for me, uh, Patrick. So back to you. It was about 15 minutes, so I did my best to uh, stay. Uh, nope, you were time. spot on. Great work um, and fantastic demo. Really interesting to see that. And obviously, a lot of different ways that can be extended even further to do more and more and more. Um, so really exciting solution and something to uh, you could really build on, uh, which is always exciting to see in these demos. Mm -hmm.